Okay, so that wraps up, um, uh, you know, uh, synthesis and analysis of serial elements, um, you know, and systems essentially. Now we're going to talk about synthesizing hybrid systems, and and then that'll transition into hybrid elements, and then and then you're kind of the master of of fact in many ways. Okay. Okay, so, um, okay, so, um, you guys know a parallel system is, is two rigid bodies directly, you know, joined together by parallel elements, okay? That's critical. It's got to be two bodies joined together by parallel elements, directly joined to each other. So that, that's a parallel system. And then a serial system is just, um, two or more parallel systems stacked or nested in series in a chain-like configuration, okay? Okay, and you know how to identify this as, as a serial, okay? Hybrid is any other combination, okay? Any, anything that's not parallel or serial, okay? And it's often thought of as like, you know, here's an example of two serial limbs in parallel. So here's one serial limb, that's another serial limb. They're in parallel, it's hybrid, okay? All right, um, so that's what we're going to look at today. Um, uh, okay, right. So so let's let's look at some examples here of what would be hybrid. Okay, so this is a. And by the way, you, you do talk about these as limbs. What is a limb? Well, it's like if you it's something that comes off of a stage. If you have a stage of interest, the thing you care about, the thing you're trying to constrain to move the way you want. Um, it's whatever comes off of that and eventually connects it to the ground, whether that be parallel or serial or even something else hybrid. Um, there's limbs. This is a serial limb coming off of the stage, and these two are parallel limbs coming off the stage. Okay? Here is a serial limb coming off this stage. Here's a parallel limb, and then here's another serial limb. By the way, if there's a, a, an intermediate stage, it's called I. The stage is called S, G. Okay, and here we have a serial system limb. And here we have a serial element limb, okay? So you know it's an element because it's a point. On the schematic, there would be a point line or curve in reality. Um, and this is, this is therefore the schematic for a serial element, okay? Here is the really important one, and, and, and this is where a lot of flexure designers would disagree with me. A lot of people say, oh, this is parallel because there's these springs that are all compliant over their whole geometry directly connecting two bodies. I and mean, it's, it's not true. Fact won't work. You have to say... You know, this is a serial limb, serial element limb. That's a serial element limb. That's a parallel element limb. Um, anytime, even if you got rid of one of these, if you just have, you know, if you had any serial limb in there, we'll make it hybrid, okay? Whether it's a system or an element, okay? Okay, so, so that's what hybrid systems are. And, and again, you might recall there's such thing as interconnected hybrid um, where you basically take springs and interconnect the limbs, the intermediate bodies of the limbs, but um, we're not going there yet. As of now, we're just looking at hybrid systems that consist of parallel serial or hybrid limbs kind of arranged in parallel, okay, coming from a stage and directly connecting to ground, okay? Let's look at those first. All right, so... Um, so let's look at um, this again. This is important. Uh, you've already seen these slides. I told you they're the two most important slides in the entire uh, course, basically. Um, and they, they basically say, I'll remind you, if you have, uh, you know, thing, constraint spaces arranged in parallel, you add them. And, constraint, you know, freedom spaces arranged in parallel, you find the intersection, okay? And it's the opposite for you know, uh, in serial scenarios, freedom spaces in series, you add them, and the constraint space in series, you find the intersection. So it's the exact opposite of parallel. And it's important to keep those principles in mind, okay? Because now we're going to hop back and forth between those principles when dealing with hybrid systems. Okay, so here we have a hybrid system. It's, you know, so notice this guy. Here's, here's one parallel module. It's another parallel module stacked in series. This is a serial system. Now we're going to take that and stick it parallel with itself. This is ground, and that's the stage, and we've got two of these in parallel. Okay, well, if we've got two of them in parallel, um, 
then what we do is we know their constraint, their effective constraint space. That's the, that, that is the effective limbs constraint space. We have two serial limbs in parallel. This is the limb constraint space. That's the limb constraint space, okay? So what you do is you add those two together because they're in parallel. It doesn't matter what kind of limb it is, whether it's parallel or series. If you just have the effective constraint space you, and they're in parallel, you add them together in parallel and you get this. And if you take their freedom space, the freedom space of this is intersecting red planes, and then you'd find the intersection of them. So it's, it's the same as this slide, exact same as this slide. Whether, whether these constraint spaces are parallel limbs or serial limbs, which is what's going on here, because they're in parallel, you do the same thing. Okay, so constraints in parallel add, freedom spaces in parallel, um, uh, you find the intersection. Uh, constraints in series, you find the intersection. Freedom spaces in series, you, you add, okay? Okay, with those fundamentals in mind, okay, let's look at, um, let's look at a design example. But one, one final thing, okay? Um, one, one final trick. So, all right. So how do you identify uh, if a system is over-constrained? Well, if it's a parallel system, you know, it, it's pretty, pretty easy. You just find the order of constraint of all the parallel elements and you just make sure they add together, that, that when they add together, they equal the number of, of independent constraints in the constraint space, right? Like, you can do this for parallel systems easily. Okay, so, so what, what, and then if it's a serial system, you, you look at all the parallel subsystems that, that, that are stacked in series and you ask, is, are any of those over-constrained? Okay, so, so what you do is, <laughs> so this is confusing. So let, let's take this hybrid system here, okay? Okay, you would ask yourself, is this over-constrained, this system? You'd say, no, it's not, okay? So let's go on to the next one. Is this over-constrained? You'd say, yes, it is, because, you know, this one has three and that one has three, the two blades, and, and yet they have a one degree of freedom. So, um, 3 plus 3 is 6, but it really should be 3 plus 2, so you get your 1 degree of freedom. It's not over-constrained. Okay, so, so this, this, uh, this right here, this serial system, is over-constrained. Okay? So if it's just a parallel system like this, you just check, is this over-constrained? And you know how to do that. If it's a serial system, if any one of them is over-constrained, the whole thing's over-constrained. And you have to check them both, or in all of them. If even one of them's over-constrained, the whole thing's over-constrained. In a hybrid thing, you, you not only have to check um, all the sub-parallel systems, make sure none of them are over-constrained, but now the new insight is you need to make sure their limbs aren't over-constraining. Okay? So in this case, this one is different than this one. They, they're not over-constraining. Okay? Th those two uh, blue lines are independent and they add together to be this. Okay, if, if there was a third limb that was identical to this in, you know, over here on the right side and it was in parallel and it was arranged the same way and everything, then it would be over-constrained because remember, this constraint space only contains two independent things in it and here's the two independent things. If you had a third one, it would be over-constrained by the limb. Okay, now the question is, is this over-constrained? The answer is yes and that's because this parallel module and that parallel module are over-constrained. Okay, so if I asked, is this hybrid system over-constrained on an exam, you would say yes. And you would say the reason is because this and this are over-constrained. Okay? Okay, so again, this is really important because you're going to get this on an exam. I'm going to tell you all the ways to check for over-constraint. Okay? Check every parallel module. If any of them are over-constrained, the whole thing's over-constrained. If no parallel module anywhere is over-constrained, then check the limbs and make sure the limbs aren't over-constraining it. And if that's the case, then it's exactly constrained. Okay? Otherwise, if any of those conditions are broken, it is over-constrained. Okay? And you can count by how many times, either from each parallel module or from the limbs. Okay? So that's kind of a new concept of how you check for over-constraint. Okay. So how do you check for under-constraint in hybrid systems? Well, um, Remember, if it's a parallel system, it can't be under-constrained. It's, it's not even a thing because it's only one stage, okay? Well, what you do, it, though, it, it, for a serial system where it could be under-constrained, 
you check and see, does this freedom space have anything, is it redundant with this freedom space? You, you look at the two freedom spaces of the parallel modules, and see is there anything redundant? Um, or, or, or really what you do is you add the number of degrees of freedom in each, and if they're greater than the degrees of freedom in this, then you know it's under constraint, okay? So you know how to do that for a serial thing. What about for a hybrid thing? Well, now you have to check both serial limbs. And if any one of those is under constraint, the whole thing's under constraint. So that's, that's really it. Um, under constraints, there's nothing too complicated about hybrid systems, okay, um, with under constraint. So if it's just a parallel system, it can't be under constraint. Um, if, it's a, if it's a serial system, it can be under constraint. You've got to check it and just make sure none of the intermediate bodies have a redundant degree of freedom. Make sure all the freedom spaces in series, the degrees of freedom, add up to the total number of freedom spaces inside it. If that's not the case, it's not under constraint. Um, but now if you've got it in hybrid, check all the serial limbs that are in parallel. And, and if any one of them is not under constraint, or is, is right, is, is under constrained, the whole thing's under constrained. Okay? <laughs> so that's really confusing. Okay. So if there's any trace of under constraint in any of the limbs uh, that are serial, uh, it is not under constraint. Wait, did I say that right? If there is, <laughs> gosh, this is killing me. If there is any under constraint in any of the limbs, the whole thing's under constraint. That's correct. Okay. And be very careful. No element in and of itself can be under constraint. So if you have a serial element limb, it will not contribute to under constraint, even if there's redundant degrees of freedom in the, the parallel systems that, you're, uh, that, it, that, it, that constitute it. Okay? Same thing if there's a, a hybrid limb. So that's another thing. You could, you could add a hybrid limb um, in parallel with something, and, and still, but you, you've got to check inside the hybrid limb um, all these things, if there's over constraint or under constraint, okay? You'll get a lot of practice and experience, okay? And by the way, a lot of these rules are out the door once you have interconnected hybrid. Interconnected hybrid, um, you need to do uh, some, some fancy, well, it's not too fancy, but, but it's pretty cool math to check if something's over constrained by how many times and if it's under constrained and how and everything. Um, and that's, that's beyond the scope of this course. Um, but I will teach it in the follow-up course to this, how you, how you deal with interconnected hybrid, whether it's over-constrained or under-constrained. But that won't be on any exams here. Okay, so with those principles probably very confusingly taught, um, let's do a case study and, and go through the systematic steps of how you actually synthesize a hybrid system. Okay, not interconnected hybrid, just a general hybrid system. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, um, so the first step is the same step you do when you're synthesizing anything. You say, what's the freedom space? Let's say we just want a translation. That's, that's common, okay? Second step is identify the correct uh, freedom space and constraint space. Well, in this case, a single translation is the freedom space is the translation, and its constraint space is this. And, and by the way, when you're designing hybrid systems, you definitely want to consider the black and the, the orange. Or the, you, know, you want the wrenches and the pure moments as well as the blue. Okay? You, you need to consider the full math, math thing. That, that's the first change, okay? Okay, so, but, but still, with the same process whether we're doing high, you know, parallel, serial, or hybrid is you find the freedom space and you find the constraint space of the whole system, the stage you want, okay? All right, and then, um, and then, then here's the only difference. Now, you, you're going to select limb constraint spaces from within the constraint space. We've never done that because serial and parallel systems don't have limbs. Okay, so in this case, we're breaking this into parallel limbs. Okay, uh, you know, and so, so we're going to break this into limb constraint spaces. So how do you do that? Well, limb constraint spaces are very similar to like um, intermediate freedom spaces, okay? but in constraint space land. So they are constraint spaces that lie within the constraint space, which means they have to be to the right of it in this case, because all the smaller constraint spaces are to the right of it. It has to lie within it. Okay. Um, does it have to be in the parallel pyramid this time? Uh, the answer is no, 
because, so even though it has to lie within it and therefore it would be to the right of it, um, and, you know, um, it does not have to be in the parallel pyramid um, because these limbs are, don't have to be parallel. They can be parallel. They can be within the parallel pyramid. But if it's a hybrid system, one of the limbs is going to be hybrid or serial. And so when you do the limb constraint space that's going to generate that limb, um, it doesn't have to be uh, something that's in the parallel pyramid. And the number of the spaces that you pick, limb constraint space, will determine the number of limbs that are going to be in parallel. Okay, so, so again, it's got to lie within it. It's got to be to the right side. So there you go. Here's all your options. Notice many of the options are outside the parallel pyramid, but many options are inside the parallel pyramid because those limbs can be parallel serial or hybrid. Okay, and, and I've given you all the options. So I, I believe there's a chart somewhere that tells you all the limb constraint spaces that can fit within any constraint space, okay? So, um, and again, you need to be somewhat skilled or you can just look up which ones they are. Here, all the ones circled in red are all your options. Everything that's not circled in red in the fact chart don't lie within this, this limb constraint space, okay? All right, so let's say we wanted to pick this one. Say we, say we really like this, you know, this is a simple constraint space. I mean, this looks ugly. But uh, here's just a, a blue plane with a box and, and the disk of pure moments. Um, so we're going to pick that. And, and, and right, like you said, it didn't have to be within the parallel pyramid at all. And, and by the way, even if you pick something within the parallel pyramid, it doesn't mean the limb has to be parallel, right? Um, so there's really no meaning to a parallel pyramid when you're synthesizing, when you're picking limb constraint spaces. Just pick any constraint space that satisfies the conditions and you can make it into a parallel hybrid or serial limb, whether it's in the parallel pyramid or not, okay? So pick, pick we're going to just pick this guy because it's simple, okay? And we're going to pick it twice because we want two limbs, okay? So, so we just like it. It's nice and clean. We're going to pick it twice. There's two limbs, okay? So we, we do, you know, and, and this one... I didn't draw it on top, uh, uh, you know, by now hopefully you're getting the idea of fact and how things are re related together, but you can imagine this one lies within this space and this one lies within the same space, it's just moved further back. So they're kind of stacked in series, you know, these, these should all be all on top of each other, but, but these guys aren't, these guys are separated, but they lie within this space, okay? So we're picking two limb constraint spaces. Now, what we should know already is, is that selection of limb constraint space going to just, just from the limbs over constrain the system? And the answer is unfortunately yes, right? Because like, you go back to here, how many independent things are in this constraint space? How many independent wrenches are in there? Well, six minus two is four, so the four. Okay, so we've got four from this limb and four from this limb, that's eight, but how many are in this guy? Well, let's go back. It's uh, 6 minus 1 is 5. So there's 5 independent ones in there. Okay, so just already, just by virtue of the two limb constraint spaces we picked, um, we already know it's going to be over constrained three times, just from the two limbs. Okay, whether you like that or not, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of up to you. But just, it's, it's similar to... Um, uh, you know, under constraint with freedom, intermediate freedom spaces and serial systems, we can know if it's under constrained if, if we do this. But now with limb constraint spaces, um, we, we know if it's over constrained by a limb. Okay, so in this example, we picked this because it's nice and simple. We picked it twice, but we're, we're not terribly smart because we're over constraining it three times. Um, you know, another option you could have done is, is, you know, since this has five in it, you could pick, you know, one from the three DUF column and one from the uh, four DUF column. So, so this has three non-redundant things in it, and this would have two in it. And now it would not be over-constrained if you had done something like that. But, but anyway, we didn't do that. We, we picked these. Okay? All right. And so now, now once you pick the limb constraint space, the rest is kind of you know what to do. You find the limb constraint spaces, freedom spaces, and then you synthesize your... You synthesize another system, whether it's uh, parallel, serial, or hybrid, right? And so for this case, um, the freedom space of this is a plane of parallel red lines that's coplanar to this, and the red lines point parallel to that. Just imagine that on top of that, that guy. And then we're going to say we're going to make a serial limb out of it, okay? So now we just do the whole process that you guys are familiar with.
and, and say we're going to pick two intermediate, free, this contains two things in it, so we're going to pick two intermediate freedom spaces, one here, one here. They, these should be drawn on top of each other, say it's that one and that one, okay? We're just going to pick those two, say, okay? And, and do we know if this limb is going to be under constraint that we're, we're making? Well, this is one degree of freedom, that's one degree of freedom, that's two degrees of freedom, so one plus one is two. So you know it's not going to be under constraint. So at least this limb is not going to be under constraint. Okay? Now you take the constraint space of each of these, which are intersecting blue planes, and, and uh, you know, let's say, let's take this one that's coplanar to that, or collinear to that, and we're going to connect a ground to an intermediate body with, with two things. And by the way, is this over constrained, this parallel module? It is, unfortunately. Okay. So this has an order of constraint of three. That has an order of constraint of three. But we've got a single rotation. And so it's over constrained by one. Okay. So we're really over constraining this guy. Okay. But then we're going to take the other red line. So if, if I drew these red lines on top, this one and this one are spread out. So this one's the one to the left, and this one's the one to the right. Uh, and we're going to use these constraint spaces and connect now this one to the ground and this one to the ground. So, and again, that's over constraint too. So we've got this guy nesting back and forth. You got from ground to intermediate, from intermediate to stage, both those par parallel modules um, or systems uh, that are nested in series um, are over constrained. So the whole thing's over constrained. And, um, but th this is how you, d this is how you design a, you know, you already know the steps to design a serial system, and, and we're, we're designing serial systems from this limb. And we can do the exact same thing, move back for the other limb, and you get this. Okay, so, so check it out. This, this first limb constraint space made this, the second limb constraint space made this. They're, they're all on top of each other. And this would work. Um, if you grounded this, say you bolted, held those two fixed, uh, this stage would just get a nice, pure translation. Okay? And um, you could ask yourself, um, and, and first of all, is this over-constrained? Yeah. It's over-constrained in here. It's over-constrained in there. It's over-constrained in here. It's over-constrained in there. This one by one time. 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 So it's four times over-constrained. And then the limbs themselves are over-constrained at three times. Right, because it's four plus four is eight, and that's supposed to be five, so it's three, three times, and so that's seven times over constraint. And then to make it even more symmetric, so there's not like some parasitic arc, you 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 know you could even make the whole thing symmetric. Now that's super over constrained, so this is massively over constrained. But this guy would get um, that this guy would get a nice uh, this guy would get a translation. Now, the reason I did this, well, and, and then you've got to ask yourself, is it under constraint? So, so we know this guy gets a translation. And by the way, you know, we made it, you can't just always take something and make it symmetric and expect to have the same freedom space. What, what this is basically doing is instead of picking two limb constraint spaces, you'd pick four limb constraint spaces that are all the same. You know, this one for that one, the two for that one, the three for this one, and four for this one, and you'd have to make sure it, it works. So you can't just always make it symmetric. But in this case, it works. Like, obviously, kind of, right? Um, okay, so, but it's hugely over-constrained. Is it under-constrained? Well, you've got to ask yourself, you've got to look, there's, there's four serial limbs, but they're all identical. If any one of them is under-constrained, the whole thing's under-constrained. So you've got to ask yourself, is the, is, are these guys under-constrained? And the answer was no, because remember, one plus one equals two. Okay? So there's no under-constraint here. Now, now, the whole reason I did this example is because this harkens back to that lathe example from my TA days at MIT. Um, you'll notice the carriage, if you go back and look at that example, the carriage on that um, desktop lathe, um, on top of that carriage, the thing that, that drove the tool into the spinning stock was driven by a flexor system kind of similar to this, except instead of having these be angled blades, they were all parallel. It was like a, a ground with parallel blades to an intermediate body that was wider and then parallel to the stage. And it had four things like this. And um, that design um, uh, had some issues. When the students were cutting it, um, first of all, it, it, that design is heavily under-constrained. Because if, you have, if, if all these blades are parallel, then um, and you hold the ground fixed with respect to this, 
these intermediate bodies are free to flap around. We've already looked at something similar. And, you know, when you nest uh, parallel guide mechanisms in series, um, they, you have redundant translational degrees of freedom, and so the intermediate bodies are un, un, uh, not constrained. So what would happen is, is um, because each limb was under constrained, when the students were cutting the, the piece, those, those pieces would vibrate almost, you know, imperceptibly, but they would vibrate to the point where you'd see chatter as the tool cut the stock as it's spinning. And so what the students did is some of the students just put strips of rubber on the outside of the parallel blades to dampen out that, those vibrations, and that worked okay. But the best solution was actually just to angle them slightly. By angling them slightly, um, these, this is pretty extreme angling, but by angling those slightly, you, you get into a flexure system that still gets a translation, um, but is not under constrained, as, as I've proven here. None of this is under constrained, right? And so these guys are locked up, and when you hold this fixed with respect to that, this is like a truss, uh, the triangle holding it still, and it, it can't vibrate. The reason they just did it slightly is because the more you kill under constraint, um, the less range you get, and they, they needed quite a bit of range. So I suppose the best solution would have been to just angle these a lot, but have them be really long, but that would take up a lot of space, right? So, so that you got to do your pluses and minuses. They chose to keep these fairly short, but just angle them slightly, and that seemed to work great, right? So th these are things to consider when you're trying to, you know, d managing under and over constraint and all these things when you're making these designs. That's why I wanted to do this as a case study. Um, Okay, and here I'm asking, is this exactly over under constraint? We, we went through that in pretty solid detail there. Okay, so, um, okay, so just, just a quick review. If you're designing something hybrid, it's, it's pretty simple. You, you find what are the degrees of freedom you want, find the freedom space, and then find its constraint space. Then break the constraint space into intermediate constraint spaces. Okay, make sure they lie within it. Make sure they add up to be that. Um, it's that point you check if the limbs are going to be over constrained or not. Um, and those intermediate constraint spaces don't need to lie within the parallel pyramid at all, right? Um, once you pick those, then just find their uh, freedom spaces and then go ahead and start the process over for serial and parallel systems that you've learned in all the previous lectures and you'll make your parallel serial limbs, okay? All right. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about how you can make your limbs hybrid, okay? Because like, so, so what if you, what if you, does that, what if we switch this in there? Okay, so, so right now this is a serial system and that's a serial system and they're put in parallel within a, a hybrid, uh, a hybrid system um, and it's basically two serial limbs in, serial system limbs in parallel, okay? But what if you want to design um, a hybrid system that consists of a hybrid limb? So you can see this right here. Already this module right here is a hybrid system, right? Because you've got a serial system in parallel with a parallel uh, spring. And so this is hybrid, but it's in series with something p uh, parallel. And so this whole thing is a hybrid limb, okay? And so... Um, you can kind of see how you would do that. So, so, so as you're designing flexures, here is, here is the best approach, right? Try considering all your options that are parallel, okay? Then try considering all your options that are serial. Then try considering all your options that are hybrid. And then try and consider all your options that are hybrid with hybrid limbs using this approach. Um, and then you can try all the ones that are interconnected hybrid. Then you've tried every you've exhausted the full design space, okay? Okay, but, but, but let's go back to like um, one level before interconnected hybrid, which is hybrid limbs. This can still be modeled as parallel and serial subsystems, right? Okay, um, and you could do a, a stiffness, an equivalent stiffness, an equivalent c compliance matrix of this whole thing still for connecting the ground to the stage, right? So it's not interconnected hybrid, okay? But um, 